Wow. Okay. Welcome to the first uh, actual S23 Ultra video of the year. So I just got this thing yesterday. I'm very excited. I'm so excited, in fact, that we ran out here. We're in the desert where I live. <laughs> and I forgot my microphone, my uh, the one that I, my lapel thingy that I normally put here, which is really good on the wind. And I'm only telling you that because I'm using a backup mic right now. So hopefully it's very, very windy out here in typical New Mexico fashion. So I think we're going to go try to, I found some really cool landscape stuff. Um, a couple of things that I want to test out that everybody really has been DMing me all about is definitely the 200 megapixel, the 50 megapixel. Well, I'm definitely, let's go, let's go find a composition and test out. The first thing I want to test out is this 200 megapixel thing and see uh, what it does. Um, I'm going to try not to talk too much once we get over this little hill because it's about to get really windy. <laughs> Okay, so got our nice trusty giant rhyolite boulder here. Uh, so let me show you a couple of things real quick um, with my screen recorder. So I want to try to block the wind. We only have a few minutes for the light um, and I, I kind of know where my composition is, but I, to give this like the fairest chance for me as a professional photographer, uh, I'm going to be using the pro mode. So we're in the pro mode. If you don't have it by default, you can click into the more and then you grab whatever you want uh, and bring it down. So there's my pro video. So that's how you get that in there. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to pro into the camera mode and What I want to do, this is, this will emulate the auto mode because in the pro mode now you can put it to auto. So I'm going to put it auto ISO and I'm going to put it to auto shutter to shutter speed. So it'll figure out the exposure for me, which is fine. But I have enabled, if you come up here and you go into the advanced picture options, I have enabled the raw and the JPEG. So that's nice because when it saves the JPEG with the RAW, it'll do all the compression and, and editing and sharpening and saturation that it does to the JPEGs, but it won't do that to the RAW. So you'll have a nice comparison to see you know, the difference. And by, uh, by default, when you look at the RAW against the JPEG, it's gonna look, the RAW is gonna look like crap. It's gonna look very soft and unsaturated and non-contrasty. That's because of how much processing Samsung does in the phone. But you'll notice with the Pro Mode, we also have uh, all of the lens options here. So I'm gonna be photographing that mountain in the background, but we're gonna get away from this uh, bush here and go find my composition. Also things to note, the, if you didn't already know this, um, the 200 megapixel is only on the main sensor so anytime you crop into that or you can't use it with a telephoto or anything like that so if we go into if we go into here and i pick i can pick the 50 megapixel so i'm in the pro mode and that's interesting it's not giving me an option for the 200 megapixel it's only giving me the 50 megapixel, which is binned, but it's not binned at the 16 bits, which is what uh, it, the 16 pixel bin is the normal binning. So this is the nine binning, I think, to give me the, the 50. So now you'll notice too that my, my uh, lens choices have gone away. And if I come back here to the regular full, then I have my lens choices again. So now if we just go into the regular, if I go back into the photo mode here, now I have the 200 megapixel, but now I only have the one X. And if you, any, if you do this, the six X, that's just, it's just cropping into the sensor and that's yucky. 
So if I do do it, I'm only gonna, I'm not gonna crop in unless I crop in post. So let's get to an actual composition before we lose some light here. And go out and brave the wind again. It's also like uh, 28 degrees out here and it's supposed to be like negative something tonight. And we are planning on staying out here to do some astro for you guys tonight. But that's a separate video. suffering all right um i'm we have a couple minutes here i'm going to screen record this and i have a couple of compositions i want to walk you guys through okay we are screen recording all right so as you can you can see here i'm in pro mode uh with everything in auto i like this thingy right here and we've got cook's peak in the background and those pretty rocks so I want a wide angle because I want to see how good this uh, wide processing does. So I'm going to let it do its thing there and then I'll grab one like this too because I, I want, I'm going to chop that mountain off just a little bit like that. And then maybe angle this a little bit better. I like the grids because I want to put that hole kind of on that bottom third line there. We're getting just a bit Okay, so now, check this out. Now I want to, so here's the regular camera. I'm gonna grab a couple with that. So there's that. Let me go into the regular photo mode and I'm gonna switch this to the 200 and I'm gonna take the same-ish shot. I'm not putting a tripod up right now, so we're just gonna have to deal with that. But even on the back of this screen, so you can see how long that takes. Watch watch the, the shutter button where my thumb is. See how long that takes to process that? So personally, if I'm shooting on this phone, I would rather have the ability to have telephoto than 200 megapixels. So I would just leave it in this and then post-process add a little upscaling or sharpening because I prefer uh, to be able to zoom like this. So here, let's get there. It's so windy. We're gonna see how good this stabilization is. I'm gonna just take a couple with this 10X. And I'm gonna hope that's sharp. And I'm gonna grab a couple more. Get a, you know, pro tip for photography. When you're doing the landscape stuff, get it at, you know, don't, don't get one and done. Um, I, I want it, I want the light different. That way you have options to blend the light or just, you know, pick. Don't just get one and then bounce, you know? So another thing, check this out. All right, look at, look at Cook's Peak, which is that mountain there, okay? You see when I have this angled like this, look how small that looks. A pro tip for wide angle distortion for any camera, whether it's a phone or mirrorless or DSLRs or whatever. If I lift this up, now look at Cook's Peak there at the top, and it's bigger and more prominent. That's what we want. We don't want to lose it with the wide angle because the the, the main sensor on here is the best uh, sensor, and it's still pretty wide. So I want to use that to my advantage, and I want to use that distortion to pull some more height out of that mountain. All right, uh, I need to wrap this up. It is getting super cold. I'm gonna take a couple more shots, but I just wanted to walk you guys through uh, the process out here. We're gonna go back into the studio and I'm gonna look at these in Photoshop and do some comparisons and see uh, how they edit and how they crop and all of that stuff. But we gotta get out of here before camera ladies hands fall off because they are legit purple right now. So we will see you back in the studio in just a minute where it's nice and warm. All right, so it's the next morning back in the studio. I can feel my fingers again, lots of hot tea, and we're good to go. I think I got a couple of good compositions that I'm happy with. 
I'm definitely going to take a look at the 200 megapixel and the 50 megapixel and some of the technical stuff, but personally, I'm more interested in the creative process. I think those things, especially coming from a smartphone, are going to be minimal in terms of how they impact your creativity. But mostly I want to see like how well they edit and if I'm going to be able to get any nice or usable images out of this stuff. So let's jump into the computer and take a look at what we got. All right, so first thing I want to take a look at is right before, well, on our way out there, um, I took this shot towards the City of Rocks. So that is where we were back there. Um, but anyways, this was, so I took this in the regular JPEG, in the regular uh, camera mode. I think that was the 3X telephoto. So here's the regular JPEG. And then here is the 50 megapixel and the 200 megapixel. What I noticed was when I looked at the metadata, the 50 and the 200 megapixel, they, because this right here was on the 3X telephoto at 70 millimeters and at f2.4. So you'll notice that. So right here, now look, we're at f1.7. So this has gone back to the regular main sensor, which is the 24 mil focal length and then the f1.7 max aperture so what this has done is because i was in this jpeg here because i was cropped i was using the telephoto lens it does not allow the telephoto lens to do the 50 and 200 megabit megapixel images so it cropped into the main sensor to match that so this is a cropped equivalent of this and if we come into Photoshop, we can see that both of these two images, they're already cropped in. So on that main sensor to match that 3X. And that is why I think they kind of look like crap. Because it should have been wider than this. I should have, uh, I should have backed it out. But I think I have some better examples. Okay, so let's take a look at the difference between the 200 megapixel and the regular. So this is f1.7, and that's the regular lens, uh, the main lens. And this is the raw photo, the DNG. So here is the JPEG of that raw image. And here is the JPEG that is 200 megapixels. Okay, so on the left we have the regular 12 megapixel JPEG and on the right we have the 200 megapixel JPEG. So the first problem that you can see is that this isn't super scientific because this isn't a studio environment and we have some metering that is different here and that's probably just because it was in auto focusing and auto metering. So don't give me too much hate for that, <laughs> but we're still looking at the detail. So let's go look at the rock here in the middle. So zooming into 50% right here, it actually looks like this has more detail and I'm gonna assume that's because of the over sharpening on this JPEG or potentially the focusing. So it does look like the regular one has more detail than the 200 uh, right here, but that could be because of focusing and because of the over sharpening. Let's take a look back here. Again, we're still seeing more detail here in the mid ground. Let's look at this rock that's lit up here. Yeah, there's some weirdness going on there and it looks better here. Let's look at the background. So the background, there definitely just seems to be softer. All right, so let's change this to 3000 by 4000 and make it what it should be. So when we downsample this, it should sharpen this up a lot. Okay, well it helped a little bit, but that background is still a lot softer than the regular JPEG. Here's one more. Let's take a look at this one and see if it's maybe just a better shot or a worse shot. So let's go ahead and downscale it again. So here, this one seems to be a little bit better if we zoom in after having downscaled. There's clearly more detail, uh, like in this cactus here, and in these rocks, you can see like this rock here versus this rock here definitely has more detail there, but it's subtle. It's not like amazing. So this is definitely a little bit softer. You can see the detail in the tree there. Uh, 
But then in the background, check this out, the background, the background looks just a little bit softer on the 200 megapixel image than on the 12 megapixel one. But the details in the midground look better on the 200. So that's interesting. All right, so let's edit an actual image here and see. So here we have the DNG and you'll notice that the, the raw image is 34 meg and that is much larger than this two and a half meg JPEG. You'll also notice the difference in the processing. So this is what Samsung did with their own processing as they compressed the JPEG. And this is the raw where we left it alone. So let's just go ahead and open this up and edit a little bit and see. And let's see if we can get something decent out of this. So I think that's a pretty decent start. So that's the before and the after, just in camera raw here. Let's go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. Let's take a look at this in low light. So this was shot in pro mode on the three times telephoto sensor. And that's the JPEG there. This is the raw. So let's take a look at the raw and see, I actually had to drop it. I dropped it to, uh, I changed it to manual settings and I put this to ISO 80 and then I dropped it down to a 20th of a second to get enough light in here. So I wanna see how this does for, this is like a blue hour shot after the sun has gone down. So let's see if we can push it. I wanna push it kind of hard and see like where it's gonna break down. You can see right there it's breaking down in the blues in the sky. So I want to back that off because I don't want that yuckies. I'm just going to do a bit of noise reduction in the sky to get rid of some of that introduced noise from the color from the saturation boost. So zooming into 100%, that's actually looking pretty good. So we got good details all the way in the background and then all the way in the foreground to this uh, yucca here in front of me. I actually kind of like that. I'm just going to dodge in a little bit of light here where it is already light. So I'm just going to try to make this foreground, the yuccas, pop a little bit. So that's subtle, but it just gives that a little bit of pop. And I don't think I want to do anything else to this. Let's see how one of these ultra wide shots is handled. So this was just kind of a fun shot, just of camera lady down there, <laughs> trying to stay out of the wind and getting ready to film, but I'm just messing around. But this is kind of a cool shot with the ultra wide. And I just wanna see if we can clean it up a little bit. I'll grab one of my presets. Good place to start. All right, I think that's looking, so there's the before and the after of the raw. You can see how wide the, the ultra wide is, <laughs> stretching the earth, the curvature there. But that's also, again, because of this is at the edge of the lens. So you're getting that distortion, but it makes it almost look like a fisheye. And I, I think it's kind of cool, but you can see all the good detail in here. Camera lady's sharp. You can even see my fluffy microphone there and there's all kinds of detail and then you can see the detail fall off again here because of that ultra wide and again that's just physics so keep that in mind if you're shooting and you want everything perfect from you know from foreground to background then you're going to have to take that in consideration and then probably some focus stacking would have fixed that if i would have put it on tripod and took two shots and then one focused here and then one focused here and then blended them probably would have fixed that for all of my images but i didn't do that this was just kind of a silly fun snapshot even though i kind of like it all right well those are the first images that i got from my s23 ultra 
and I'm moderately happy with them. You know, like I said, I'm more interested in the creative process than the technical specs. Uh, I definitely think that the 200 and the 50 megapixel thing, you can probably get more detail out of there, but the ones that I got, you know, you really gotta be careful about that 200 and the 50 megapixel when you're doing that and making sure that you're, you're not cropped in because if you're cropped in like we saw, it's gonna give you that soft, ugly looking images because there's already that heavy crop in, in camera. So I definitely wanna avoid that in the future. I think too that, you know, if you're shooting with it properly in good light, then yeah, you're probably, and you're not cropping in in camera, then you probably will get slightly better detail than the regular 12 megapixel image in JPEG mode. Uh, but again, the downside that I learned here is that you, there's, there doesn't appear to be the 200 megapixel raw, only the 50 megapixel, which is better, but that's still kind of a bummer. But that's the problem with like Samsung seems to have this issue with they've crammed a lot of megapixels in there and they don't really know what to do with them. I think their algorithms for processing those high megapixels, especially given that you can't access the raw file, uh, I think that's kind of a downside to to that. And also, like I mentioned before, for me personally, as a photographer, I like having uh, more focal lengths rather than just image quality. I'm not personally concerned as much with getting as much image quality as possible, especially with the advances in, you know, post-processing and stuff like that that we can do now. There's a lot to really make up for that. I would much rather have the the 10x the 3x the the 1x and the wide angle i would much rather have those options in the regular pro mode and be able to control my settings and do all that have the raw files than be stuck with a 200 megapixel uh, jpeg image which i think personally for me is definitely a limiting factor and a deal breaker for me wanting to use that feature Overall, I think the S23 Ultra cameras are amazing and I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos with them. So if you have anything else you wanna see specifically, I also did film the Astro right after this. Uh, so that will be coming out soon, the first Astro video of hopefully a couple. Um, but if you have anything in, in specifically that you wanna see, let me know in the comments down below. There will definitely be more phone stuff coming soon. So if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it, especially in terms of seeing that the creative process to me is definitely the most important thing. I had a lot of fun out there shooting and that's the most important thing. Not worrying about the technical specs and all that, just putting it in pro mode, putting it in auto, being able to use the lenses that I want, get the compositions that I want and just have a lot of fun doing landscape photography is the best thing I think. And I think this phone is gonna give that to a lot of people and you're gonna have access to maybe something you never did before. And that's just gonna be uh, the best thing I think. All right, I'm done rambling. I've got second breakfast to devour. I've got to finish editing this video. So I will see you out there hopefully in the next episode very soon. Thanks for watching.